hoping it. I'm hoping it. I mean, I, can, I know who you are because I know you. Like, I know okay. different Danny, people. Don't get involved, but I cannot see the clock. I know that there's numbers on it and where it roughly is, but... But I was very disappointed <coughs> in it. Listen, get myself to hear the card. Worrying about class. You know, it's sad that a little American boy died and that they had in prison. <coughs> Young Dunk. Very yeah. sad. Yeah. 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 Chair. <laughs> She's very relieved. We got a minute or two. No, you did good. She was she was worried, but you're. I told her you were gonna be here. You want to watch it on TV? I've done it before. I can do it. Hey, you got two you minutes to spare. That's fine. That's right. You're not late. Okay, it's 7.02 p.m. At least by my own. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Planning and Zoning Board for the City of Tarpon Springs for our June 19th, 2017 meeting. And we'll have a roll call. Mr. Vinson. Here. Mrs. St. Arnold. Here. Mr. Seaman. Here. Mr. Haas. Here. Mrs. Protos. Here. Mr. Terrapani. Here. Mr. Coiner. Here. We have a quorum. And I don't think we need uh, the quasi-judicial announcement since <coughs> it's a legislative matter that we have. Is that, uh, do we need to go through that tonight? Yeah, because of the zoning one, we're going to. Oh, okay. Then we'll have the uh, quasi-judicial announcement. Please pay attention to the city attorney. This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Planning and Zoning Board acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the Board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the Board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that it, the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Is there any members of the board wishing to dis <clears throat> disclose ex parte communication or conflict of interest tonight? Anyone from the audience going to give testimony tonight? If they could please stand and raise their right hand to be sworn in. <coughs> Swear or affirm that testimony that you're about to give in the proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So sworn. 
Thank you. Uh, our next item is item number three, application 17-47, ordinance 2017-21 and ordinance 2017-22, the Hunt Annex. It's a request to amend the future land use from residential low and residential medium to residential office general and rezone from R100A <coughs> and residential multifamily RM15 to residential office RO for approximately 0 0.45 acres of real property located on the south side of Keystone Road, approximately 200 feet east of the intersection of Keystone Road and Lake Tarpon Avenue. And we'll begin with the staff report. Good evening. Uh, again, this request is to amend the future land use designation from RL residential low and RM residential medium to residential office general and to amend the zoning designation from R100A single family residential and RM15 residential multifamily to RO residential office. The applicant is uh, the Tarpon Turtle Annex LLC. Um, again, the property is located um, on the south side of Keystone Road, approximately 200 um, feet northeast of the intersection of Keystone and Lake Tarpon Avenue. And the s property size is a point is 0.45 acres. Um, the applicant is proposing to, re to rezone and to amend the future land use of the two parcels totaling 0.42 acres located again um, on the on Keystone along Keystone Road. Um, the proposed future land use uh, change is to consolidate the holdings that the applicant currently holds. The applicant currently has the property right on the corner of Tarpon Avenue and Keystone Road, and these parcels are adjacent to that part to that property. Right now, they're looking to make the rezone happen so that they can have a unified project along there, where there would be a new office building that would be. Um, installed on these properties where they if they were to be rezoned so essentially it's taking two residentially zoned parcels um, and providing for an access through the existing um, commercial site right now this property abuts um, the property is adjacent to Myers Lane where you all are aware we have a home that was built along an alleyway and actually into the alleyway. These parcels would actually access through that all alleyway because there's nothing in the access management plan that would allow them to access onto Keystone Road directly with the driveway. It's not appropriate <coughs> given the drainage um, that was added there in the new um, uh, configuration of Keystone Road. So as a result of that, after working with staff and talking to the um, folks at the at the county, um, we determined that trying to put a residential driveway across that rather large conveyance for stormwater into the roadway is just not something that's going to be feasible for a single family residential home. And that's about what you can get on um, this particular property. Trying to access through the alleyway that has a building blocking it is not going to be feasible either because there's about three foot of clearance on the alleyway. The building is that far over into the 10 foot wide alley. So that being, a ca being the case, it's very limited for um, residential development here. So with that, that's the basics of this and I'll go through the criteria for, um, the, re for the comprehensive plan amendment and then the rezone. Again, the comprehensive plan amendment um, is a legislative action. Um, the countywide rules for the locational cri uh, characteristics of traffic generation characteristics of existing proposed land use are shown in the tables below. This is basically just to lay out so that you can see the difference between residential very low and residential multifamily and the proposed future land use category, which is the um, residential general office. And again, the category that this will go to from, will go from and to on the countywide plan because that's the next step after this goes to the first reading before the BOC. It will then go to the county and the county will actually have to amend their land use as well to um, change the land use. This is a residentially zoned piece on the countywide plan as well. It's also part of the scenic uh, corridor um, along Keystone. So the county will is amenable to going through that process, but the process starts here and then we'll move on to the county and they are going from the residential low to medium category to office, which is what you see in the lower in the lower table here. Uh, and again, this goes through the whole background of kind of what I explained to you is there's some issues with the drainage and with um, trying to put a driveway in here and talks about um, why it's 
more appropriate to allow them to rezone to the, or excuse me, change the future land use to the residential office general and allow them to access through the current project because that's what's going to have end up happening. They'll, as they go through the process um, to the board, they're going to be um, required to provide a restrictive covenant. Um, part of that restrictive covenant is actually going to further restrict the future development that they can put on this property. It's also going to require that um, any building on this property would have to access through the existing commercial piece on the corner of Lake Tarpon. Again, that's because we don't want commercial traffic going into a residential neighborhood, even if it physically could, at, right, at this point it can't. Um, they are also proposing possibly doing um, some vacations of the right-of-way along the alleyway, which would probably be a great idea since that alleyway no longer connects to Lake Tarpon Avenue, and there's, so there's no longer the connectivity that, and the reasoning for that um, vacation would allow for not only them to develop, but also for us to clean up the issue with the building in the middle of a public alleyway. <coughs> and with that, the zoning criteria, as mentioned, the amendment is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan. The proposed um, RO zoning designation is consistent with the proposed ROG future land use category. The designation of the property to a non-residential zone, zoning district will allow for shared access and will reduce the number of curb pucks along um, the Keystone Road and encourage, encouraged by the future land use plan. And what it's talking about here is the future land use policy is actually in the countywide plan as well. The available uses to which the property may be put are appropriate to the property in question and are compatible with the existing and planned uses. Again, we would agree with that, um, that RO is um, not, while the plan, the countywide plan restricts the extension of office into the area. In this particular case, there is no feasible way to get single family residential use on these properties, being with that, that the plan is going to be amended and the county is amenable to that. Staff feels that um, it is consistent with the available uses and the planned uses in the area adjacent to it. The amendment shall provide for efficient and orderly development considering the impact of growth patterns and the cost of the city to provide public facilities. The proposed rezoning will allow for the expansion of the existing RO zoning district fronting on the four-lane divided highway. The proposed use is more appropriate to this location than residential use, um, which is primary allowed under the existing zoning de designation due to constraints on the construction of the direct driveway access to the location and the lack of alternative access to the site. The subject property, oh, sorry, the amendment will not adversely affect nor exceed the capacity of the fiscal ability of the city to provide public facilities, including transportation, waste, solid waste, uh, drainage, recreation, <clears throat> fire protection, library services, and other similar public <laughs> facilities. Compliance with the adopted level of service standards can be demonstrated if necessary. The subject property is 0.4 acres, and the proposed rezoning would be for an office, and the proposed uh, rezoning would allow for a maximum FAR of 0.25 and a maximum ISR of 0.75. However, the ISR is further restricted, again, by the countywide plan because this is in the scenic corridor to a 0.375 um, to in order to be consistent with the countywide rules, which is the reason why they will have a restrictive covenant before this moves much further along. Based on these maximums, the proposed rezoning would allow up to 49,000 and a half square feet of building uh, floor area and 7,350.75 um, square feet of impervious services for the office. Such a development would have a minimal impact on the public facilities in the area. We have adequate water and sewer to serve the existing building. And again, the utilities would come through as well as, well as um, the access through the existing site. So there would be probably a master meter at the at the original uh, building and, that, and the other building will be serviced off that master meter. Technical review team um, reviewed this application on April 15, 2000 and had no objections to the request. <coughs> Uh, we did not receive any poor, a couple, uh, public correspondence. However, this was advertised in the newspaper and mailers were sent out. There was a sign posted on the property. However, it needs to be posted on the property and because of the large um, right, drainage right of way there, it, you can't really see the sign from Keystone Road, unfortunately. Um, staff is recommending approval of the following. Future land use from RL residential low and RM residential medium to ROG residential office general and zoning from R100A single family residential and RM15 residential multifamily to RO. And I can answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Uh, it's time now for questions to the staff uh, from the board members. Uh, 
I have a question. Uh, why isn't the change on the county map being done first? The the process for the countywide land use change is that the local municipal the local municipality needs to start the process, go through their planning and zoning in their initial public hearing, then send the application package to the county, and then they will change the land use on the countywide plan. Is the city going to be the applicant in that process? That is correct. The city is the applicant in that process. Why is the city doing it instead of the applicant? That is the process set out in the countywide rules. Is it possible for the property to access the easement, not the easement, it's an alleyway that's platted alongside the uh, property that's already owned by the applicant at the corner there, whatever lots, lots 26, 26 and uh, through 23, I think the applicant owns already. And right on the edge of that, the edge that's away from the uh, Keystone Road, there's an alleyway there. That's the 10 foot wide alley that goes down to Myers Lane that has a building in the middle of it. So yes, they can access that alleyway, but currently with the, the structure that's, uh, with it, that's currently in litigation, there is no physical means to actually go through onto Myers Lane right now. Okay, I'm not talking about that section of the alleyway. I'm talking about the alleyway that goes alongside, well, if you have a, you've got a copy of the survey in the backup. This goes right into the drainage easement. Right here, this alleyway here that's adjacent, this alleyway goes out to Myers Lane. It does not go through to um, Lake Tarpon Avenue anymore. There was a vacate that was done um, when the original property building was built, the original building that was built there by the architect. He actually did a vacate and vacated that portion. That alleyway actually used to run between Lake Tarpon Avenue and Myers Lane. But it was vacated when the original building was put in as a result they only have this access alley here, and that alley does not actually connect into Keystone Road. This is where the drainage retention pond is here for the divided but, highway. But doesn't the applicant own that parcel of property that's on the corner there? They do own that parcel of property on the corner. And so they own that alleyway. I mean, it's not an alleyway platted. It's been vacated, but they own the alleyway now. They, this portion of the alleyway actually has not been vacated at this point. It's the, right, the, right, the public has right to traverse. The alleys that you see on here are actually not owned by the applicant. They're, they're owned, they are still city property. Until such time as they come through a vacation process, they, they still right to traverse those, those um, alleyways. Okay, I'm looking at the survey, not the uh, property appraiser's map. It's a boundary survey uh, done for the applicant at some point in time. Yeah, they, that alleyway has been vacated. That the one that goes through to, to it's like Tarpon Avenue. Yes, that's been vacated at this point. And so that is that property that used to be the alley is owned by the applicant. Right? That is correct. Okay. So my question is, why can't the applicant use that part of their property to access, you know, across the back of the lots that they, the lots twenty, twenty one, and twenty two that they own? They could use that. They could also use the existing asphalt parking lot. To those to those properties, right. So what it will probably happen is they will probably connect the parking lots here. Um, there, what you don't see here is there's actually a planned building on lot 26 here that has actually been constructed at this point, but we've got it's gone through all the permitting process and actually you guys approved it mid 2012, 13, somewhere in there. There was a building, the Bronson Building, is what it was called. Um, that was actually um, permitted for this property. It's actually not been constructed, but it's all the way through the permitting process. So at this point, I'm not sure based on that building where that building actually lays, if it goes as far back as that property line or not. I mean, there are setbacks in RO that are like eight feet. So it may be a portion of that may actually go into that alleyway. I don't actually know that. Um, from looking at the, the survey, you're not gonna see that future development there. But they can access there and they can access to the existing uh, paved parking lot. But that building that you said has been approved a few years back, that, that land that uh, it would be built on is owned by the applicants. So That's the, correct. So the applicant's in control of that. Whatever that is correct. Uh, also on page six of the 
staff report uh, number nine, which I think is the, uh, I don't know if these are the conditions. Yeah, I think they're the conditions of approval. Hold one second, please. It says, please submit the restrictive covenant application and proposed covenants. This application needs to move forward with the future land use and zoning amendments. Do we have that in hand? Um, they have not submitted that, but they have planned to submit that. This is actually the TRC comments. These are comments. Since this board does not see restrictive covenants, it is appropriate for them to submit the restrictive covenant after this meeting and before BOC, the first meeting at BOC, because this board does not actually review that restrictive covenant application. And this is the TRC comments with me noting that information that that's gonna be a requirement. And that's actually to satisfy the county as well because the countywide are, are the countywide authority is going to want um, the sections of the countywide plan established on a restrictive covenant saying that they can only have an FAR of X and an only an ISR of X based on the countywide rule. But uh, I don't want to see why we don't get to see that and, and consider that application or what those covenants are. We've talked, you talk about the restrictions and what they're going to be restricted to do, but we don't get to see the These are, again, the TRC comments, the technical review comments. You don't, that by your own regulations, the restrictive covenant is not bound to be part of this application. I asked the applicant to bring it forward. They have not brought it forward. It will not move forward to BOC until it comes forward. Now, that is completely up to you whether you want to have a discussion with the applicant, but it is appropriate for the applicant to have those restrictive covenants put in place prior to the board, the BOC hearing. They are not required to bring them here. They, you know, this board does not see them. Well, the ordinance, uh, ordinance 2017-22, um, and the findings, number two, and it says the, that the amendment shall provide for efficient and orderly development. If we don't know what those restrictions are going to be, you know, we don't know how orderly it's going to be. I mean, you're telling us that's what the plan is. Uh, Chair, if you want to defer this application and require the, re require the applicant to provide the restrictive covenant, you are completely uh, allowed to do that. At this point in time, they were asked to bring them forward at the TRC. They did not bring them forward. The Census Board does not see that. I didn't see bring, uh, postponing their application, having them pay for an additional advertising fee simply because they haven't got the restrictive covenants complete. At this point in time, that would be a question for the applicant and a discussion for the applicant on uh, moving forward with the restrictive covenant. Okay. Any other questions for the staff? Ms. Uh, what you're asking for really isn't relevant to what we're doing tonight. What w it's not a concern on a question for us for tonight. The restrictive so, covenant is required so that we can restrict the use moving forward as it goes through the hearing process. So it's relevant to a discussion, but it's not a requirement for it to be forward okay. for you to make a decision That's tonight. What I wanted to make sure. So it really isn't required for us to base our, our vote on that tonight. That is correct. Okay. Chairman? Mr. Terrapani. Thank you. Um, just regarding the restrictive covenant, since we're on the topic, uh, my understanding is that <clears throat> the restrictive covenant is essentially they're going to either have a restrictive covenant for cross access to cross, Mr. Vincent, what you were talking about in terms of linking the property for parking, drainage, et cetera. So in terms of the application, if they don't get that restrictive covenant in place, regardless of whether we approve it tonight or not, the application does not continue. Is that correct? It will not continue beyond BOC without the restrictive covenant. Right. But the restrictive covenant in itself is pretty cut and dry. <laughs> correct. It's going to be an agreement that the board is going to basically agree to that these are the restrictions that he, they're, they're basically agreeing to put on their property ahead of site planning and that type of thing. And that's really just to protect the city for if they were to convey the property. Now, I don't think Mr. Hunt has any interest yeah. in doing that, that he's really pretty much settled that this is his right, I understand. area. <laughs> but So the restriction is... is uh, in relation to cross access and also the FAR the, mm -hmm. the floor air ratio. So it's cut and dry in the sense that you either have that restrictive covenant in place or you don't. Correct. And if you don't, then you don't progress. Correct. Right. So uh, Mr. Hunt owns the property next door to this vacant land, which is already uh, developed as an office. And uh, for, for my edification and to recap, this, 
the reason why this application is even coming before us tonight is because RO is already in place next door, correct? That's, yeah, they want to expand that R, that existing RO if node. If it wasn't adjacent to RO, then it, the application would not be no. heard. Correct. Okay. Well, so, it might be heard. Well, it might be heard, but not as easily. Correct. Okay. So, for the record, could you uh, define impervious area? Impervious areas, that's the, um, all the areas on the property, including your building, um, your uh, parking lot, any other areas that will not allow water to penetrate for whatever reason, those are considered impervious surfaces. And so there's a ratio between the size of the lot and the amount of coverage, essentially lot coverage that you can have, and that's what your impervious surface ratio is. Thank you. And you mentioned something about utilities uh, to the site, and I didn't, I didn't catch Utilities that. to the site will probably be master metered off the original building um, for the other buildings. Um, they will ex be extended through whatever drain access easement there probably is. will also have a drainage easement more than likely. Mm -hmm. And when you say master metered, the city will, will read that meter and they'll be responsible Correct. for collecting whatever Correct. it is. Correct. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the applications and how they progress, it comes to us first, then BOC for their first uh, hearing, and then assuming they approve it, then it goes to PPC and then also the Pinellas, or, and also the Board of Commissioners, but it's simultaneous e applications. To yeah, the correct. Of economic opportunity? It goes, no. This one is not actually going to have to go to the state because it's under the 10-acre threshold. So gotcha. the state doesn't have to see it's a local matter. You do still need to progress over to the countywide plan because the countywide plan needs to be amended in this case. Right. They either amend it or send a letter back that says you don't need to do an amendment. Um, in addition to that, I thought staff made good points uh, at the technical review committee meeting regarding uh, the pro or, and also in the backup re regarding the proximity to the frontage on Keystone Road and the drainage access. Um, and also, I thought that the mention in, from TRC uh, was a productive conversation. The fact that they even mentioned and put in their comments of uh, restrictive covenants for what we've already talked about, which is the access and the drainage and things to that nature. So I thought that that was. Uh, nice to see in TRC's comments. Uh, one other question on the deed um, that was in our backup regarding the two of the, well, three of the lots. It mentions that the the, uh, the buyer, the applicant, took property subject to the terms and conditions of a stipulation and settlement agreement, and it gives a recorded OR book and page in the public records of Pinellas County. I wasn't able to wasn't able to bring it up when I went to the official records, the clerk's website where normally you can access that. Do you have a copy of that, or do you know anything about that? I uh, don't have a copy of the stipulated settlement agreement. Um, that's something that I can look I can look up. I know that, the, that there is um, right-of-ways and things in the area that are a little different here because of um, the county acquiring parts of um, Keystone Road. There's been a bust in the survey as well to the north, so there's some issues with the surveying here. I certainly can look and see if I can get a um, copy of it and um, send it along. Well, I mean, I couldn't guess at what was in it. That's why I tried to look at it, just to see what might be applicable, if any, to this uh, application. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Anyone else have questions of staff? At this time, would the applicant like to come forward and make any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members, former Mayor Protos and former Commissioner Tara Penny. Uh, we work with your staff very closely, obviously. I think they've done a great job. Excuse me, could My you name is Todd. Thank state you. Your name and Todd Preston, 334 East Lake Road, number 102 in Palm Harbor, Florida. Um, let me say um, that uh, just following your staff report, they raise a number of good points. I do want to put in the record a letter from uh, Landon Marie and Associates. John Landon is a very well recognized engineer who places emphasis of his opinion uh, that, number one, that uh, it would be expensive to permit design and construct driveways for residential homes at this site. Pinellas County is also in agreement with that, and your staff is in agreement. John also indicates here, brings out the point which the county had concerns about, that there are five right-hand turns within 1,000 feet. The last three turns do not have a deceleration lane. It is a dangerous situation, again, as Pinellas County has pointed out. So the road um, does not need two more connections. So as has been discussed, this project if you approve and moves forward, we'll go through Mr. Hunt's current property, which alleviates all those issues and all those problems, if I may put that in the record. Um, there's another condition um, to make you aware of is right in front of this property, the, the road does a curve, Keystone Road does a curve, which is a major arterial. 
carrying a lot of traffic day and night. And it is a condition that's very loud, and it's a condition where if a residential home would just be bombarded by headlights at day or all throughout the night. So beyond that and those conditions that we've discussed and the heavy impact of a major arterial at this particular point, it's just not conducive for residential in the least. So office use would be very conducive, and as the experts have, many experts have told you already, that would be the best use for it. Um, in regard to some of the questions coming up by the, by the board, um, First, for regard to the chairman, the process you're following is the process all cities and count, all cities follow um, in terms of who the applicant and how it moves forward. Um, secondly, um, whatever may be in the deed, this property will meet every requirement, law, regulation that's required under the code and under this um, uh, under this uh, zoning category. Uh, in regard to the restricted covenant, I think it was made very clear. We are in the process of writing that up. We work with your staff. Your staff brought that up at the beginning of this process, which we are happy to work with them and agree to. So we're getting that paperwork together. We'll have it at the BOC. And as we've been told, that is a normal course of process for review of a covenant restriction. So Mr. Hunt, um, as you know him, has a um, number of properties in town. He's tremendously improved them. Uh, made them all very viable, very good, responsible, tax-paying properties, which will be the same here. So you don't really have a leap of faith in terms of um, his good work in the area. He has a long-term presence of developing and running real estate throughout the uh, Pinellas County area, which I think speaks for itself. So with that, we appreciate your attention and consideration. We look very much forward to your consideration to approve this. We can move forward. Thank you. Mr. Pressman, remain there in case there's any questions for you, please. Uh, any questions of the applicant by the board members? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, board members. At this time, we'll uh, open the uh, public portion of the hearing. If there's any members of the public who wish to speak in favor of or in opposition to this application, please come forward now. State your name and address when you get to the podium. Torrance Hunt, 1955 North Island Avenue, Tarpon Springs. One of the things that um, uh, this board's not aware of is the uh, new building that's going on, the current property, has a slab poured. So your comment, sir, about being able to ingress, egress from the existing property is no longer feasible. Uh, the walls will be going up on that building in the next two weeks. So that old easement has been uh, vacated for a long, long time, and there's no way that could ever be revived to access, which would just be redundant uh, to what we're trying to do to access through our property with this um, present uh, rezoning to get the lots back to RO. So if uh, we <coughs> succeed in that, then all the aggravation of trying to get an ingress, egress off of Keystone Road, which Pinellas County does not want, and a very high expense. And as Heather has put out, uh, the easement to go, is that 15 foot or 10? 10 foot, I think. There's a 10 foot easement going to residential, which is, which is ridiculous. You can't come into a commercial mm -hmm. property with a 10 foot easement in between two residential houses. Uh, we're all gonna have um, um, rotten tomatoes thrown at us if we try to do that. So uh, the, the most easiest, the most common sense to this, and guys, we've studied this for over 18 months and we have a lot of experience in this and uh, that's the reason I hired Mr. Pressman to represent us is to make this a residential office. That's what everything is. Uh, the new building is going up as we speak. And to get it rezoned to residential office uh, on the next two lots and allow us to have a very limited FAR, mm -hmm. very limited. I mean, uh, when we first went through this, and I've been doing this for a long time, and the percentages of how we got to the FAR are mind-boggling. Would you agree? 
I mean, it, we all sit in this room one day and go, how did we get to this number? The number is very acceptable. We, as a developer, uh, you don't know me. We like landscaping, we like parking, we like all kinds of stuff. A lot of developers like to put the maximum square footage they can on a piece of property and then make everything else work. I'm just the opposite. We like uh, big green areas, we like retention ponds, we like lots of parking, and we've been very, very successful at it over the years. And that was the main concern that all of us went through with the tarpon turtle. We need to increase parking. I didn't ask for one square foot of building to be built. Let's increase parking and do all the landscaping and all that stuff. But I wanted you to all know that that building's already 30% done. So there is no easement issue whatsoever. And uh, Nobody in my position, I don't think in your position, would want to access through a 10-foot easement through a residential area. So really, it's a landlocked situation unless we allow it to go through our property, and that's what we're asking for. Any questions? Hunt? Any other questions for Mr. Hunt? Lois here. No, I just want to say, Mr. Hunt, um, and I may be speaking out of turn right now, but I ha went out there, and I have to congratulate you on what you've created with the tarpon turtle and your parking and the landscaping and the design of your parking. You certainly have improved the area and you've done an outstanding job in what you've designed. Uh, so thank you for putting your money into tarpon in there and giving us something that is very proud for the community. And uh, it, it is excellent what you've done so far. Well, I... But I don't think you're gonna do anything to make that excellence go away. I promise you I won't, and if you'll allow this to go forward, you guys will be proud of the Tarpon Turtle Annex. Yes. I promise you that. Anybody else? I'll, uh, I'll echo Ms. Protus's comments. We, uh, <clears throat> I worked, worked with you and as the applicant on the Tarpon Turtle Annexation, and uh, you definitely took down, you took a problem area down there in terms of the parking, people parking on the street, et cetera, and you did the right thing by the by the community in the neighborhood and uh, I also recall uh, the property that you own on the corner where I think the yellow office building is I also recall that sitting vacant for a long 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 time and I think you I think did you rezone that or that already had the zoning it already had the zoning but as a side note there's a waiting list now to get in that office. I'm sure there is yeah I mean it makes sense yeah it's, it's a great looking building so I, I have all the confidence in you and uh, Again, appreciate your investment and reinvestment. Well, department. We, working with you guys has been a blast. I mean, we've been very successful, and uh, uh, common sense sometimes prevails. It does. <laughs> we have the best of planning in our department. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I'll, I'll give you that one. Anyone else wish to speak? Seeing none, the public portion of the meeting is closed, and the board will deliberate. When you're ready for a motion. Ready for We're a motion. ready for a motion, yes. I move that we approve application uh, 1747 ordinance 2017-21 uh, of the Hunt Annex. Second. There's a motion and a second. I have a question before we go forward with the discussion. Since there's two ordinances, do we need, can we do it in one motion or do we need to? We can do it in one motion. Okay. Uh, so there's a motion and a second, a second by Mr. Terrapani uh, to approve. Any discussion on the motion? Roll oh, call, please. Mr. Coinder. Here. Yes. Said yes. Mr. Terrapani. Yes. Mrs. Protos. Yes. Mr. Hasse. Yes. Mr. Seaman. Yes. Mr. Park. Oh. Mrs. St. Arnold. Yes. And Mr. Vinson? Yes. Okay, that completes number three. Uh, we had approval of minutes. Usually that's right after the order uh, roll call. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of May 15th, 2017. Second. Uh, right. Motion by Ms. St. Arnold, second by Mr. Seaman to approve the minutes. Roll call, please. Mr. Coiner? Yes. Mr. Terrapani? Yes. Mrs. Protos? Yes. Mr. Hasse? Yes. Mr. Seaman? Yes. Mrs. St. Arnold? Yes. 
Mr. Vinson? Yes. Motion carries, and uh, the next item is staff comments. We have no comments. Okay. Next item is board comments. We will have a meeting in July, correct? Any other comments by the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Well, meetings adjourned at uh, 7.40 p.m. But you know he does pretty aggressive. Yeah. 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 He would have really cut a zero. <laughs> he would have. I know. He's I a bad so <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I started telling Nick to stop that. Uh, he looks like her little pink cat. Yeah. 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 Yeah.